Howdy again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and this is tips number 716, which is part 5 of the Swivel Jaw series. And in keeping with my policy of beating a dead horse, I have decided to uh, make this chapter and the next one, which will be 717, part 6, that will be on carburizing that is case hardening and I will be doing that by popular demand but let me tell you why I'm doing this chapter which may seem senseless to you and probably is. In my next episode of this and that I will be discussing this wonderful Sterrett antique sign where it came from and all of that but the reason I'm doing this chapter is I got so very many comments on, of course, as always, do it my way, I got a better way, and some of you do have some good ideas, and I'm going to make another one because I already had another set of blanks, and I'm going to do it by this method here with a ball. Now, this idea was given to me by Brian Block, but several others then mentioned it as well. But this allows, in the sample piece, swiveling and tilting in all directions. So, this might be a good idea. So, that's the essence of what I'm doing here. But I also want to talk about various types of pins. I know I've already done that before. But a lot of good suggestions on that, so let's get started. Okay, much of the discussion revolves around a way of captivating, that is capturing, that is keeping the pin in the product or in the jaws because you're going to lose this. You know darn well you are. The only reason you might not lose this is like the sample I showed you originally in part one that someone sent to me. You won't lose it to the extent that you'll never use this. It'll be in your toolbox for 50 years. So, But if, if you actually would use it, there's a good chance of losing it. And there's uh, several ways of preventing that. And in I showed you a sample of where I had soldered it in. Now, if you solder it in, you don't need these flanges on the end, the steps, and all the difficulty involved in here. Also, I did one where I just Loctited it, but of course that's just in one side, one piece. Several people even sent me pictures, Ellie Price being one that made a beautiful set of these, and he used a cap screw, a tiny little 440 cap screw to hold it in place on one side. Again, that'll only be one side, not both sides, so you, they still will separate. I still think this was an excellent idea, although I had no response on this at all, to make these tiny little rings and loctate them on there. Well, somebody said, why don't you use a magnet? Well, here's a magnet. So that's just a piece of half-inch stock with a series of neodymium magnets in there. I think there's four in there. Let me grab those real quick. There they are that size that'll that'll fit in there and they'll stay in there by themselves by magnetism now these magnets are so incredibly strong I thought for sure that the magnetism would be greater than what it is as far as holding it in there now that it will stay in there but it's it, it's not all of that strong because it's being I guess you could say insulated or isolated from the magnet maybe a piece of brass would allow the magnetism to go through. I'll let you experiment with it, but that's kind of a good idea right there. And those are, I guess they were 3 eighths, and I made a flat bottom hole, so they come all the way to the end. So that was a good idea. Thank you for that. Whoever sent that to me. Might have been several. Look through the comments. Some of the comments, if they're not too abusive, are very interesting. You know, good design on any product means that it's simple and takes very few parts and can be manufactured or made very easily. Anyone can invent something that's incredibly 
complicated with all kinds of parts. But it takes a great engineer to simplify something. And I do not claim to be one of those. I'm just saying that's my philosophy on that. But one person said, well, they're going to make a dovetail. Well, and that would be beautiful, and then it, it would hold both of them together. I think that was the only suggestion that I had that would truly hold both of them together. But a dovetail both here and then the mating ones on the pin here would be incredibly difficult to do. A very high skill level. If anyone ever does that, send me a picture. I don't intend to even try it. I suppose it can be done final assembly would be difficult. And then one person told me, well you fool, instead of manufacturing your own retainers here, simply use the retaining rings. And you know what, I got up out of my chair and ran down here and I thought that is an absolute stroke of genius. Why did I not think of it? You know, I get tunnel vision. I don't think outside the box at all. That is one of my major faults. One of millions. But in order to use a retaining ring, even like this type, requires quite a large hole because of the ears right here. Well then, you're thinking, why don't you use an E-clip? Well that requires even a more bodacious hole. Let me show you here with a template. So in order to use a retaining ring, instead of a 5 8 counterboard like you see right here, you would have to have one that is really 21 30 seconds for that type of ring and for an E style of ring 7 8 but actually much larger than that because these have to be applied you know from the side so this type really wouldn't work at all. Forget the retaining rings. If you want to use some type of ring use this. All right, I'm going to make another set of these, but I'm going to run through it real fast, and I'm not going to put the teeth on it. There's just no need. But several of you in the comments said, well, you fool, why don't you just drill both sides at once and do that by separating them slightly. So let's try that, and that is a very good idea. Remember that these are not full holes, or they're partial holes. So, with the set of the jaws in a vise right here, I have measured, we could do this by the drawing too, and you can see that we have about a sixteenth inch space there and there. So I have in fact cut two pieces of uh, stock, sixteenth thick, but I'd like to make it just a little thicker, so I'm just going to add some card stock, which is ten thousandths. So here's the general idea that I'll have both pieces together like this spaced with the aluminum there that I just showed you. Tighten them down and form that hole. Now why did I say form? Do not attempt to drill it. You don't know what a drill bit's going to do. This has to be done on the milling machine and I'm going to plunge cut it of course with a half inch. But I believe I'll plunge cut it initially with a 3 8 or 7 16 to act as a pilot. I don't know if it's necessary. Make sure that you have parallels underneath so you don't drill or damage your vice. Make sure you wear your safety glasses and practice all of the safety rules that I harangue. I'm over at the Bridgeport Mill. The work has been clamped in the vice with the spacers and I have already found the center in both directions that is using an edge finder. That's a 3 8 end mill which is my pilot, and there are spacers underneath, that is, some parallels under there so I will not hit the vise as I come through. So let's do a little drilling, or is it milling? And now the finish size, half inch end mill all the way through. Oh, 
Okay, that's it. Remember, I'm not going to counter bore it. Okay, there it is, and it's a little bit simpler not putting those counter bores in there. It looks good, and I'm just going to use the magnetic pin. I do favor the Loctite too, or even the soft solder that I did. I lost that sample. So there it is. Now that's as far as I'm going to take that one. And in fact, I wish I would have used this steel in the next mock-up that I'm going to do because I'm out of steel and this is aluminum so I'm going to make the ball version now which will be a useless mock-up of course without teeth but with angles and I'm going to put a ball in there and the ball again held in by Loctite half inch ball And that'll be done with a ball end mill. Did I say that? All right, let's go over. Let me get this marked, and I'll see you over at the bridge port. The workpiece is mounted in the vise, and I found the exact center using an edge finder. And I will sink this half inch ball end mill to a depth of 215 thousandths. That looks good, and now the other one. I've had many questions about this halo light here. I call it a halo light. I have mentioned it in many other videos, but it's made by Hound Dog Machinery. And they have a website. I am not paid to say this, but I did receive this item free. And it works great. It really puts the light right down on the work. Okay, that's what they look like so far. There's the ball. Swivels in all directions, of course. Now what I'm going to do, and I've already marked it there with the black lines, I'm going to take it over to the milling machine and using the 16 degree angle block that I showed you in the other video, I will produce the angles. I'll just give you a real quick shot of that. That will be done off camera. You've seen, you've seen a lot of that in the other video parts. Okay, there they are. Look pretty good. I wish they were made of steel. Now I'm going to Loctite the ball in there in a minute and then go eat and then come back. But look what we've got here. Swivel in both directions. Pretty cool. Okay, the Loctite has set. You do not want the ball to fall out because when a hardened ball hits the floor, it never stops bouncing and you will never find it. So you do need to secure it. Now, I've, I'm still having people ask me, well, what's this thing for? And I mean the old style here. It is for using in a typically a machine vise or a drill press vise to hold tapered work such as this. So I'm kind of repeating what I said four videos ago. But not everybody watches all of the parts.
Matter of fact, nobody does. I have prepared a piece that has a compound angle. You can easily see this angle, but I also milled an angle here on the side. However would you hold something like that? Now, I will have to confess that never in my whole machining life did I run into that particular problem, but you never know. So let's put this piece in the vise. This is the ball. But that's one possible application. There are some limitations with the ball. Remember there will be one more, the next one, where I do case hardening of probably this one. Naturally I can't do anything with this. It's strictly a mock-up as was this one with the magnetic pin is a mock-up. So I guess that about does it for today. Clean up! See you next time, Mr. Pete.